Next, Wisconsin entrepreneurs pitch their ideas to local moguls. They will compete for awards to help scale up their business. These are the moguls. Jerry Gendusa, the former CEO of MTech, is now the co-founder of Stuck, providing breakthrough strategies for businesses. Jerry is the author of Get Unstuck. He is passionate about creating hope and opportunities. Joanne Sabir is the co-founder of the Sherman Phoenix, an entrepreneurial hub for small businesses. She works with American Family Insurance to revitalize Wisconsin communities. If you heard one call, that's all. You know David Gruber, founder of Gruber Law Offices. The Gruber family generously supports numerous organizations and charitable causes throughout Wisconsin. Gail Klappa is the former CEO and now executive chairman of WEC Energy Group, parent of We Energies. Gail is co-chair of the Milwaukee 7 and a member of the executive committee of the Metropolitan Milwaukee Association of Commerce. Peg Ann is the former CEO of Empire Manufacturing and supports her community by making connections and breaking barriers to help individuals achieve their dreams. Entrepreneurs that are really successful don't try and think out of the box. There is no box. We all win in a world with no boxes. This is Project Pitch It. My name is Alan Goodman. I'm the founder of a Goodman's Desserts. So we specialize in butter cookies with glaze, lemon cookies with glaze, a s'mores cookie, and a bread pudding. I didn't give you the adult version. This is the regular version. But the adult version has bourbon, vanilla rum, or, or Hennessy. Oh my. Oh no, we, we should have had the adult version. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll raise it at a later time, absolutely. But the, the goodies are in the boxes. Feel free to, to dig in. So I've been baking since the age of 12, under duress. So I, I told my parents that I was going to the library after school. I was actually going to play basketball. And uh, when I got busted, my mom put me on punishment. And my punishment was to help her bake and cook in the kitchen. And so I learned to, to love baking from that. And I was entrusted with the family recipes. And I've gone now from baking with my mom under duress <laughs> to, to baking for the Milwaukee Bucks, the world champs. Wow. I heard you were connected to the Bucks, so that's true. Absolutely. Critical question, what type of bread pudding do you make? Yeah. So yeah, so the, the bread pudding I make um, is, so it's either the plain one that you guys have, or, and I bake the alcohol in. So it's, you know, bourbon is baked in the bread pudding, and it's sweet enough so that you don't need any sauce or anything, you can just eat it. Cold, warm, however you want it. Vanilla rum, and then Hennessy as uh, well. Jerry likes to drizzle bourbon on top of it, so it's okay if he Absolutely. does that. You drizzle bourbon on anything, I'm, I'm, I'm a fan of that. <laughs> Absolutely. Help you sleep at night a little bit, perhaps, <laughs> David? Yes. You do yours at 9 a.m., though. <laughs> <laughs> no judgment. Okay, so. so how, um, did, how did you decide, with your mom doing the cooking, how did you decide to turn this into a business? Yeah, so I worked in corporate for about uh, 20 or so years. And, you know, as? And, well, as a number of things, I was a Six Sigma black belt, so process improvement stuff. That's up your alley. Yeah. Okay. Continuous improvement. Yeah. I have a finance background, so I was in financial services and client management. And so, worked some long hours, and I decided if I'm going to put in this much time, I should be putting into myself and something I love to do. And, you know, in, in the dessert industry, it's, it's like a $60 billion industry. And, and think about it, every milestone we've had in our lives ends with a dessert, right? It's either a birthday, a wedding, a baby shower, and, and it can change the, the energy of the room as, as it's on my banner. I mean, if you have a, a bad dessert at the end of a nice event, you remember that. Like, that was a beautiful wedding. That cake was terrible, though. And, Alan, you, you have a major contract with the Bucks. How do you scale this business? What else are you doing to scale? Right, so I'm actually a solopreneur. Right? So I, I bake out of a commercial kitchen, and then I ship desserts, I, I do curbside, or I deliver. But I'm starting to work with a co-manufacturer now to make the product for me so that I can make more relationships like with the Bucks. Uh, I work with Marquette. So I want to spend more time using my corporate experience that I've you know, spent in front of clients to do that to build the business. And I can only do that if I'm not in the kitchen as well. So when you discuss building the business, what is the greatest need in that respect? Yeah, I would say it's one is, is working with the co-manufacturer and getting that inventory built up so that I'm not scrambling to kind of get, you know, make cookies and, and get them out. Um, the other thing is the packaging, because the, the other part of this is getting into the, the wholesale market, right? So I need to get my packaging acceptable for that market. And then obviously, 
you know, fortunately being on the show, the exposure and marketing is the biggest piece. Yeah, having tasted your product at a Bucks sure. game, and I can tell you, you've got you've got a phenomenal set of recipes. Oh, thank so you. Congratulations thank you. on that. Thank you. But to build on Joanne's question, <laughs> how can we best help you? What what is your bottleneck? Where do you need the help? Yeah. So really, the the help is the exposure and marketing piece. Is the that's part of the help, and then really the other part is just 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 the scaling. So um, having the funding to get the first PO with my co-manufacturer and get that inventory. So I always look at things as a 10,000 cookie scenario. Like that's in, in my head, right? So if somebody comes and says, hey, we need 10,000 cookies, am I prepared to deliver that, right? Only when I finalize this deal with a co-manufacturer will I be able to say, hey, we need 10,000 cookies. So having the funding to be able to build that inventory to do that is key. And I actually learned that when I was making the bucks order during the playoffs. And I was in the kitchen for a few nights doing it. I'm watching the, the, you know, the row games. I got my, my laptop there and I'm watching the game while I'm doing it. But I'm also thinking like, okay, this isn't sustainable. We need to spend all this time making these cookies. And my time is probably better spent um, being out getting more customers. And so as long as the co-manufacturer can get the product as, exactly as the recipe states, which they have been, I've, I've, they, we've done some test runs, then I'll be comfortable with it. Anyone who hasn't tried one of these should try it. Oh, I'm a fan. Um, this, I, oh, see, I, I haven't. I took a taste knowing what it tastes like, so I just. Um, <laughs> this frosting on here is so awesome. Oh, thank you. Um, thank you. Well, thank you very much. Yeah, thank you for the time. I appreciate it. It's a really cool story, and listening to that story, it brings me back to memories of having to build product when I started a business and then figuring out how to get out of the role of actually building and doing that type of work and focusing more on marketing and on operating your company from a different level. He's definitely got the product quality mm -hmm. and, and the taste. Yeah, the trick and the business mind. And he's got the skill set. Uh -huh. Coming up, this entrepreneur identified a problem in athletics apparel and solved it. Later, a new business that is helping scientists in the lab. I'm Gina Cornell, and I am the founder and owner of Chow Bella Athletics. Have you ever been walking your dog, playing basketball, biking, running, doing yoga, or reaching for a box of crackers in the top shelf of your kitchen and your shirt rides up over your stomach? <laughs> when I started triathlon many, many years ago, I was looking for a, a top and shorts that I could use to train and do events in. Well, I couldn't find anything that fit me very well, so I resorted to wearing men's kits. If you look at any women's triathlon group, you'll see that I'm not the only one that has this problem. And I've decided I could fix that problem. So I started tinkering around and I came up with a hook and a loop system. The loop is on the top and the hook is on the shorts. So you have a two-piece kit but yet you can loop it to make a one-piece kit. I have a question. Yes. Have you ever thought of that for plumbers? <laughs> <laughs> I thought that's more for their crack on the back I side. I know. We'd need a hook in the back. Yes. <laughs> this is exciting to me as a former triathlete. So will this take you through the whole event? So in transition, I don't have to change. I can take this through the bike, through the run. The swim, bike, run, yep. You can wear it. In, it through the entire event. And comfort, tell me about that. So that's important. Looking good is, uh, is always key. Yep. So comfort is, is essential. When I designed this, I am using, our factory uses really high quality state-of-the-art fabrics from Italy and Switzerland. And so the, the fabrics are out of this world, very comfortable. I then decided I need to build this brand. So in 2019, I started to do building of the brand. I came up with designs and um, customers have been really, really happy with it and in the world of triathlon in the United States we have four million triathletes that's a lot of potential customers so um, the customers that have bought my kits they absolutely love them they have said they're the most comfortable kits that they've ever worn how are you marketing to this this broad group of people across the country well I've started out with um, Facebook that seems to be where a lot of triathletes gather. I also have a celebrity ambassador, Susan Haig, and she is the world record holder for iron distance for female triathletes. And she says the kits feel like butter. Those are her words, not mine. <laughs> is this for men as well? I just started dabbling the green kit on the end, the one piece suit is for men. 
they really like it. I have a friend who's done Iron Man Kona who just started testing it out and he said it's the best kit he's ever worn. I'm working with Trek to launch a bike company and so oh. um, I was wondering about wow. that private label opportunity to say if I wanted Rise Cycles on, you know, the kit, That's a is really that a possibility? I can do that. My factory, my manufacturing company can do that. And if you want to feel the yeah. products. And now I'll ask while everybody's yes. feeling, uh, what's something that you think <laughs> you need more than anything else from the moguls? Well, definitely funding would be absolutely pie in the sky wonderful. Um, and I, I need some know-how. My background is a uh, writer and a government official for 10 years. So for me, this is a whole new world, owning a company and actually putting something out to the world. But I didn't want to always wonder what if. What if I hadn't tried No it? regrets, right? Yeah, no regrets. How do we try on? Is there an opportunity to try on? It's just kind of this trust-based, web-based. It is, and when I was designing my um, size chart, I really worked hard to give maximum inches, minimum inches, so people really can dial it in. And I'm also available. People can FaceTime me, call me, send me messages, and I've worked with people fitting them in their kits. I've had no returns. Well, thank you. Thank for being you. On the show. Thank you so much for having me here. Uh, really I really good presentation. Oh, Bernice. thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. I love the concept of being able to span potentially into other markets. You brought up bicycling. The cycling industry is up 200% in terms of bike sales. So, wow. folks are ready for what she's really? what she's and you're looking to start up a business? I am. I am in, I'm working with Trek to open uh, a cycle to increase access in community of color. So, so cool. Yeah. Good for you. Coming up, this medical school student is helping scientists share expensive lab equipment. Hey moguls, my name's Harry and I'm the co-founder and CEO of Auto Sciences. Have you ever wondered how long it takes to cure a disease? Well, on average, it takes about 17 years for data on a lab bench to translate into clinical therapies used at a patient's bedside. When lives hang in the balance, this slow pace is simply unacceptable. So maybe you're really passionate about curing Alzheimer's or developing new therapies for leukemia, but you just don't know where to start. You want to make a difference in the world, but you don't have lab space, millions of dollars worth of expensive equipment, or even years of expertise in a complicated scientific field. Well, as it turns out, scientists across industry and academia actually have a very similar set of problems. And that's where Auto comes in. Auto is an online marketplace platform that accelerates scientific discovery by connecting scientists with the help and equipment that they need. And connecting them to equipment that goes unused, expertise that goes unconsulted, and potential that goes untapped. Simply put, we demolish R&D barriers that get in the way of innovation. We're currently running a pilot platform that has 15 users and a little over $1.1 million in supply-side capacity. So let's say there's a researcher at the University of Wisconsin-Madison uh, in the chemistry department. She might have what's known as an NMR machine, which is a $1.5 million machine that takes up a whole room and is crucial for analytical chemistry. She might only use this piece of equipment maybe six times a week, and since it takes about 10 minutes to run a sample, th um, this means the machine's only being used an hour a week and the rest of the week it sits around collecting dust. She could then use Auto to create a listing that specifies what kinds of experimental services she's willing to perform for others in a fee-for-service transaction. At the same time, an early stage life sciences company can browse the marketplace to find contract research organizations, core facilities, or researchers like this one who can help them acquire the preliminary data that they need to raise a seed or series A round. After all, no investor wants 1.5 million of an early stage biotech seed round to go to one piece of instrumentation. So Harry, how, how did you come to this idea? What's your background? How did you get interested in this kind of solution? Sure, so I'm currently a first year medical student at the Medical College of Wisconsin. Uh, my co-founder and brother is a fourth year med student at MCW. And long story short, we were scientists and we started to notice some barriers and inefficiencies in the research process. We saw that that led to worse outcomes in the clinic where things aren't really translating, that 17 year gap and we just decided to dive into the problem. We talked to dozens of scientists, you know, is it red tape? Is it because the science is hard? What's going on? And long story short, we ended up making auto based on what we heard. So your belief is there should, there's no reason for there to be downtime in finding cures, solutions? Exactly. So your need is? Funds, money. Yeah. Funds, but yes, and I think 
outside of that, there's also some mentorship needs because you know we're scientists by training, but it also you know you guys have all awesome business backgrounds and you know affiliations with organizations that I think could have interesting collaboration opportunities with Auto. And have you thought about? I'm sure you have as you're going through this pilot how you're pricing the service. Yeah. So right now. We take a 15% buyer side commission fee on each transaction. And in the future, we plan to transition into a freemium subscription model, sort of like Amazon Prime. Well, that's an interesting concept. For sure. Thank you so much. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I appreciate your time. This is awesome. That has the ability to go in so many different oh, directions. You need a piece of equipment, a test equipment is very expensive, but you don't use it all that often. And how do you set up this marketplace where you can share equipment for more immediate results? And the more we collaborate today, the more successful we're all going to be. Absolutely. Next, the moguls discuss the pitches and decide what award will best help the entrepreneurs. Now the moguls decide which award will best help the entrepreneurs. The Project Pitch It $10,000 cash award will help an entrepreneur soar to the next level. The Jedusa Award is presented by the Lubar Entrepreneurship Center at UW-Milwaukee. It includes access to the center's powerful resources for entrepreneurs, including mentorship, programs, workshops, networking opportunities, and state-of-the-art collaboration space. Plus, new this year, the American Family Insurance Award will include pairing an entrepreneur with an American family leader to support their advancement in all aspects of business, including marketing, IT, HR, and finance. Three different companies, and all of them at different points of their, their stage of their growth. Let's start with Goodman's Desserts. I was intrigued when he said the 10,000 cookie scenario. So he's thinking of this ability to scale. And his background is, is in continuous improvement in manufacturing. He's got a background in finance and he understands the need for marketing. Yeah. He also wants to work on the company and not in the company. Now how does he do it as a solo entrepreneur? I, I, what are the next I don't steps? know, but just him knowing that he should be working on the company and not and in the company. And he's he's ahead of a lot of people. He's provided clarity in terms of the trajectory, right? Mm -hmm. Working right. with the co-packer, getting out of the mm -hmm. kitchen, being able to use that business mind. So I think his process is, he's very astute. Yeah. And he's he got makes a, plan. a great product. He has a plan. He's got a plan. But what actually, what are the steps of his plan? Well, he his mindset, first of all, has to change completely because, I mean, what he brought up was his own dream and his own nightmare. Somebody wants 10,000, give me 10,000 soon, and, and he's in that's the what you he's want. And I'm trying to cook it. And yeah. he's trying to be a mad scientist with cookies. And it's It seems like the, the connection to the coal packer is what is going to provide the freedom mm -hmm. to, to work on the business. It just brings back memories of, of making thousands of juices for the bucks. Like I was like a, I love Lucy, remember stopping on grapes? So I understand, you know, the, the dynamic tension between growth and being actually prepared. And it seems like he's, he's ready to traverse that hurdle. Gets you right back into the day. That takes me, a little traumatic, <laughs> a little traumatic, but yeah. Let's move on to Chow Bella and Gina. So she's a triathlete, she understands the market, and she understands the neat, and whether it's for biking, or it's all aspects of triathletes. She seemed to be such an idea creator, but when we talked with her, she was very candid about, I need business help. Yeah. I, mm -hmm. you know, I, I've got this incredible idea. Help me with how to market it, how to plan the business. I think, I think yeah. she could really use a boot camp in entrepreneur and business. I don't uh, do exercise, apparently, like <laughs> the rest of you do, but. At least not triathletes. <laughs> no. Not 17 mm -hmm. hours, right? No. And then there was Harry at Auto Sciences. Yes. Mm. And he's really on to something. Yeah. I, I think of the, the use of capital equipment and how expensive capital equipment is and the ability to collaborate and share that equipment. He's got a launch program going on. There's a, a, a number of local universities that were identified in the launch program. Yes. And he's a first year medical student. Wow. And that business could go in so many ways. And you wonder how we can best help. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think that that's a key question. I mean, clearly he's got a financing round underway and the dollars will be significant. And as always, we have some tough decisions to make. We sure uh, do. Yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Next, the moguls present cash and awards to the entrepreneurs.
Now, the moguls present cash and awards to help the entrepreneurs scale up their Wisconsin businesses. What you're doing serves to advance what's possible in science. And then I am honored to provide $1,500 from American Family Insurance. We believe in protecting dreams. And in addition, we are working with We Energies to provide a, a free day of mentoring and looking at your business plan and looking at your marketing plan and seeing if we can help you refine and get to the next level with your marketing. We think you've got a terrific concept here. Congratulations. That's awesome. Thank you guys so much. I really appreciate it. Thank you. That's awesome. Your presentation was excellent, and I am proud to give you the award of the Peg Ann David Gruber Project Pitch It Award of $10,000 wow. in cash. Awesome. Oh, my goodness. Take you to the next level. Yes, it oh. seems like I could help you out, and maybe you don't have to be a solo in this. Yes. My family thanks you for that as well. Oh, okay. <laughs> They'll see me more, so that's good. Congratulations. Gina, yeah. identifying a need and taking advantage of it and capitalizing on the opportunity is something that you truly did. I'm here to present you with the Lubar Entrepreneurship Center Award, along with the Gendusa Award, which consists of 5,000 in cash, along with some mentorship. Wonderful. To take a look at that business, you could go in so many different directions, mm -hmm. and we want to help you navigate that journey. Thank you so, so much. This is going to be incredible, and I can't wait to see what I do with this. So thank you, thank you, thank Fantastic. you. Congratulations. Good luck. Thank Congratulations. you. You did a great job. Thank you. Thank you. As we think about how we can best help you, one of the things that comes to my mind is a phrase that Casey Kasem, a nationally syndicated disc jockey, used to use. Keep your feet on the ground, but keep reaching for the stars. And I think that has tremendous implications for a young entrepreneur. What you're doing is difficult. You're trying to turn your passion and your dream into a real business. And we're just wishing you the best of luck as you got such great ideas to help, help the whole society move forward. Congratulations. Thank you so, so much.